Good morning and welcome to another week in our garden. Now we're down the bottom greenhouse to start with and I just wanted to show you the horticultural gentle soap that I use because one or two of you said you've been trying this soap and it's burnt the foliage. Now if you're using washing up liquid remember to about a litre of water you only want like two drops of soap in it if you make it too strong and spray that's when you're burning your leaves if you do use the washing up liquid and you do spray it and you think oh it could be a bit strong you can always a couple of hours after go along with some clean water and wash it off a bit this is what i've been using horticultural gentle liquid soap i've been spraying all these peppers etc with it and it's not burnt any leaves at all but remember you only want one part soap 15 parts water it is watered down quite a bit but it is a gentle soap so it's worth a try if you're having trouble with the washing up liquid also never spray when the sun's shining anyway because that will burn them now it's cleared all the aphid that was on the peppers mainly at that end where the window is but i'm sure they'll come in again because we keep the windows open quite a bit now and the door so there'll always be aphids blowing in so we just use the horticultural soap and just control them we'll be fine we've also got the peppers starting to flower now that's that's good we'll just nip out the front of this greenhouse and we'll pot up one of those 90 litre pots with some carrot seed a little bit late maybe only a week or so but it doesn't matter now just before we plant the carrots i'll show you one of my father's day gifts no doubt you can hear it buzzing but this is it here look it's the you can see where the moles have been not they really are going to town on me this year so my son's bought me one of these and they beep and they vibrate and the there you are it does that about every 30 or 40 seconds and vibrate so it's creating a noise within the soil um, I'll level this piece of ground out where they've been and then I'll let you know whether they work or not it was a pack with two in so I've got one at the top as well it'll be interesting to see whether they work or not but the uh, as you can see the moles are, really are a nuisance this is the first of the two smaller tubs that I filled with compost ready for putting the carrots in I'm going to pre-wet the compost like you do for carrots anyway you always pre-wet for carrots it's quite a big pot and it's uh, more than two feet off the ground so we shouldn't have a problem with the carrot fly with it we'll just let that soak for a second or two and then we'll put the seed in this is the seed i'll be using it's just autumn king too right what i shall do it's had a little bit of a soak i should just broadcast the seed thinly as a possible on it put some vermiculite on top then if they do look a bit thick we can always take one or two out afterwards now there's you see there's enough there for this pot it's just a case of just putting it thinly in you'll never get these thin remember not to rub the seed as you if you are putting them on like this and not pick too many up else they'll come out all over the place you'll not be able to control the flow if you pick too many up there you are you see a 
you never know we might just have a bit more success in this pot than what we have in the garden I think that's plenty in there just one or two there look we've missed it I put those back in above the pot then if any miss they get set anyway so this is your vermiculite now we have to spread it until you can't really see the compass so once a good covering if you go over several times until you got it it's going to take quite a bit but it's well worth it and then a gentle watering once this is on and then if it gets really hot and sunny we'll put a cover over it just to stop the top drying out quite so quick a little bit more I think and again a bit more that's about it I think we'll just drop a bit of water on it just to settle it down now I have been harvesting this week um, and I'll get Diane to put the footage in now while we make our way up to the shed now we've just popped into the fruit cage to pick a few more of these strawberries as you can see there's a lot ready now so we need to have a good pick we'll just pick a few of these that are right when you're picking try not to crush them and leave the tops on like that they tend to last a bit better if you do that so we'll carry on picking and show you how we're doing there's a few strawberries we picked today now there's quite a few still coming and we are more or less picking every two days now so we're getting quite a few strawberries in and they taste delicious let's go and see what's down the garden as regards uh, salad crops now we've come down to the bottom where this little salad net is and we'll work through it to see what we can harvest looking at a distance i'm sure there's some radish some guardsman onions and perhaps one or two Um, and perhaps one or two of the white turnips which would be nice grated into the coleslaw let's see what we've got and then we'll lift a few the leeks that we're going to use for salads are not quite they're about the size of a pencil so we'll leave those for a day or two and we'll just go in and take some of these guardsman onions and just prise them out with the knife knock a bit of the compost off if we can there you are lovely onions we'll have a, a decent bunch of those i think This one, we've got some big old ones. Let me just put the knife down. There you are, they'll do nicely. They smell gorgeous. There you are then. We'll take those, give them a wash and they'll come apart. It's no good trying to do it until you've got them under water. And then the radish yes i'll definitely get some of those out these are sparkler 
Right, very nice. Look, I'll take one or two to make a good bunch and add them to the onions. There are nice, a nice bunch of radish. You must keep pulling your radish and keep setting them because once they get to that sort of size, they will start going to seed. So keep pulling them, even if you have to give a few away. Now these are turnip snowball. I'll have to look through them to see if there's any of the right size it's just sort of golf ball size it'll just be nice if they get too big they get a bit too woody for salad use not really no not there's one of the turnips i've pulled up as you can see they're not quite ready yet. A little bit more bulk on those and they'll be ready. So within a week or so, they'll be ready. When it does get a, a little bit bigger, Diane grates it into the cold slaws. They're absolutely delicious. While we're here, we'll just lift a couple of beet. Oh, while they're small. So just take the compost off and that one. If you just scrape the soil off a little bit, save taking it up there. That's just a nice size, look. They're not all be as big as that, but we'll get some. I'm using the knife to lift them and scrape some of the soil off because I don't want to just pull them because they might break off at the top. The smaller ones that we set from seed, they'll be a while yet. Look, they're just starting to get a bit of a, a bottom on them now. I'll just move up the line and get some. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These are called bolt hardy. So they should be good. A good old fashioned variety bulk, aren't they? Now, that's enough for us for our salads, and they'll be lovely and tender and young. They nice, nice piece of beetroot. Then. While I'm here, I'll just take one of these Lola Rossa lettuce. There it is, not lovely lettuce. Try and take the roots of your lettuce out if you can because they'll just sit in the ground and they'll rot and then you could get your you could get the whole lot going rotten if you leave the roots in. That's a nice lettuce. We'll take that. A few bits that we've harvested today. Some of it will be for our lunches this week. I'll just take you through it. Now there's the Lettuce, Valorosa, very nice. Beetroot, nice and young ones. They'll, they'll be for good on salads. The first cucumber of the season. Not huge, what we normally have, but the start. So, and there's several more nearly ready. The radish is called Sparkler. New one to us, but I've had a taste and they're very nice. Spring onions, they're the guardsmen, always good on this heavy land. And of course, the strawberries. These are the early strawberries. Uh, we have been picking those for quite some time, so it's not really our first harvest. 
and they are very very sweet now we've got up to the shed those strawberries were delicious by the way we got up to the shed and I've been asked if I could show how I prune the grapevine but they by the time they asked me I'd already done it I did it on a very windy day because it's all flopping all over so I got the got the vine trimmed so Diane said she'll put a video on the drop down box of us pruning grapes so you can actually see how we've done them before I haven't done it any different now it does look better for the trimming although it was a very very windy day the only thing you might find with your first pruning that I don't think I've mentioned before but you'll get a little bit of sap dripping from the cuts but don't worry about that they soon heal up this one's healed up a couple of days afterwards and it's fine now I just want to show you the seeds I'm going to set this week we'll start with the flower seeds the pansies uh, it's got three varieties of pansy there and some wallflowers they'll be for the front garden at the front of the cottage on the roadside more or less and they'll make that smile the sweet william the monarch mix will go with the wallflowers and then this one that's wee willy that's the one that we'll put into the troughs and pots because it's a very small one the other thing is the bellis perennis they're the pom-poms that we use and the ones that we've actually planted in the garden are still flowering now these are the vegetable seed I'll be putting in this week there's two lots of cauliflower there I'm putting the winter three in just in case we have a really bad autumn then that'll take the weather a little bit better than triumph cabbage sienna and kill mario which is the red cabbage they'll go nicely together there's a, another cauliflower there that's owlsmere it's a part packet so we'll put it in same with the broccoli uh, that's the autumn green calabrese which will go in and is tough enough to stand the winter the swede they come free with a book that my daughter has so she gave me those there's cabbage hipsy long season variety autumn giant cauliflower we did those last year and they're quite good and cabbage tundra which will be right into next year before that shows there's a quite a few brassicas there for us for the winter now we're going to have to make room for all those now while the other plants are finishing and then making this room we'll grow them in cells and then if need be we'll pop them into a little bit bigger pot so we can hold them until the space is available in the tunnels etc ready for growing on for winter with keeping them in pots we'll have to just keep an eye on the aphid etc and the white fly but we can control all that that should be all right now that'll be it for this week i hope you've enjoyed it thank you for watching many many thanks for subscribing take care everyone and we'll see you next week bye now